Hello and welcome to 5 upgrades to your Bamboo Lab A1 printer using BQ products. These products were kindly sent to me by BQ and I'd like to share how they perform with today's audience so you can make the decision if these are the upgrades for you. Five products that were sent for reviewal were hardened extruder gear, LED lights and three different types of build plates. We're going to begin today's video with the hardened extruder gear, which will be replacing the plastic one that originally comes with your printer. The reason you'd want to change over to a hardened version as compared to a plastic is that the steel gear will outlast the plastic one. I will guide you step by step showcasing how to replace your existing extruder gear. I'd highly suggest only to do this when your extruder is experiencing problems such as under extrusion or over extrusion of the filament. We'll begin by turning off the printer and unplugging the power source. Set your extruder unit to where you feel comfortable doing your work. Remove the PTFE tubes by pressing down on the quick lock collar. Remove the print head front cover. You'll need a H1.5 hex key wrench, which typically comes with your Bamboo Lab A1 printer. Remove the rotating wheel and then proceed to remove all the screws from the pressure block. Take good care of where you put all your screws as they're pretty small, so they can easily get lost. For the next step, I like to use this tiny flathead screwdriver to remove your filament hub cap and then filament hub assembly. Take out the spring. For this part, you'll need H2.0 hex key wrench to remove feeding bracket. There are two screws holding it in place. Take those out. Make sure you don't pull out the feeding bracket too hard as there is a filament sensor with a magnetic strip attached to it. Safely leave it sitting on top of the extruder unit. Use your H2.0 hex key to remove the screw to release your filament cutter lever. If you need to change out your filament cutter blade, you can go ahead and do so if you find that it's looking kind of dull. We're now at the point where we finally get to see what's truly inside the extruder unit. Remove four screws on the extruder front cover and there is going to be one more screw on the side as shown in the video. Remove the front cover, but be careful as there is a spring and a metal cap that will most likely fall out, so be ready for that. Proceed to take out the extruder gear assembly. Make sure you don't lose these. I can't stress it enough as these parts are crucial for making your extruder work properly. This plastic idler arm will also be replaced with the aluminum version, part of BQ's hardened gear kit. Alright, here's a quick look to the insides of your extruder unit. I'm now going to replace the cutter blade using needle nose pliers to hold it in place, as you don't want to cut yourself doing it bare hand. Get yourself some latex gloves or find a way to apply this molybdenum sulfide grease to your extruder gear. Remove your old extruder gear, take out the old bearing. I tried to cover the entire area as much as I could. You don't want to overdo it as grease will spread out naturally over time. It's time for us to assemble everything back the way it was. Install your new BQ hardened extruder gear. Make sure the gear teeth interlock with the motor's gear. Install the idler arm. Now for the cap and the spring. Make sure the smaller extruded portion of the cap goes into the spring first and is positioned on the left side of the extruder unit. Install the extruder front cover back on using the original screws. Screw the filament cutter lever back on, making sure that the cutter goes into the special groove designed for it. Install the feeding bracket, being mindful of the magnetic strip. Push the strip back inside the housing as needed. Secure the bracket using screws taken out previously. Install the spring back into the feeder. 
install the pressure block, put the rotating wheel back on and your nozzle. Put the front cover back on, install the AMS hub and feed all the PTFE tubes back into it. Plug your A1 back on and we're done with this upgrade. Next upgrade are the LED lights. What I like about these lights is that you're able to remotely turn them on and off, as the switch provided with this kit has an automatic light induction, which will turn the lights on when the switch detects presence of light. It will turn off when you turn the lights off. So it functions backwards as compared to a photo cell. The power source is your actual A1 printer as your printer has a second 4-pin connection on the back of it. This LED comes equipped with double-sided tape for mounting onto your X-axis rail. I ended up mounting my lights to the frame, keeping any wires away from the Z-axis screw using zip ties. I ended up mounting them there simply because I'm a bit scared they might peel off and cause some trouble with moving extruder. Also, if you're going to follow my steps, be mindful that if the X rail moves too high, it may squish the LEDs and worst case could potentially break your printer. So I do not suggest copying what I'm doing and installing them according to how BQ tells you to install them as shown on their website. I was also told that they recently updated their double-sided tape so it should stick better. Now let's look at three different build plates that BQ sent me. I'll first feature dual texture honeycomb and houndstooth pattern plate. Now for the first print. Oh, and yes, this is the first time I'm running my printer after installing the new extruder, so I'm happy to see filament is actually coming out, so I know I've done the install correctly. This is a tiny organizing plate I made for my desk. Helps me, keeps things in place, and keeps me in line in terms of me putting things back to where they were. You can see the pattern being printed on the back of this print, so the texture plates definitely work. I recommend this plate to anyone who wants to make their prints stand out more visually. Up next is the Frostbite Cryo Grip Rough Texture Plate. This one here is one of their higher end plate as it has extremely good grip. I will showcase a test at the end of the video. For now, I did a quick print of my hand. This model was also generated within minutes using Bamboo Lab Maker Lab tool uh, called Image to 3D Model. Link is in the description. Now the plate itself has a rough texture. The heat bed itself only needs to heat up 30 to 50 degrees for PLA to be able to hold the print in place and 50 to 70 degrees for PETG. This plate is only designed for PLA and PETG and is not compatible with other material. Now, as for Glacier Plate, it works with most engineering material as compared to Frostbite build plate. BQ has a rating called GSI, Grip Strength Index, a scale 1 to 10, placing Frostbite at 10 and Glacier Plate at 8. Frostbite also gives your initial layer a rough texture, similar to Bamboo Labs PEI plate, and Glacier Plate gives you a very, very smooth first layer. Now, let's go ahead and perform what they call a torture test. I will choose the minimum requirement settings for both plates and see if they're able to print this benchmark of 150 degree slope with bare minimum surface area. What's funny is that halfway through the print, I only now realize that uh, the Glacier Plate heat bed uh, was at 35 degrees, which is 10 degrees less than what's recommended. Uh, 45 is what you need to be minimum uh, when printing PLA. And it was at 35 degrees, and as you can see, it still managed to successfully uh, complete the torture test. Uh, so did the frostbite plate. It successfully managed to complete the torture test. So uh, they do work as advertised. I would like to say a really big thank you to BQ for sending me all these products to do a review on. Um, I'm going to leave my affiliate links down in the description where people can go ahead and click them. And you're going to be prompted to uh, BQ's website where you can search all these products. The 
uh, hardened extruder, the LED lights, the build plates, um, all of those will be found on their website. Yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I would like to ask you to leave a like, comment which product you like the most and what you think of them. Alrighty, I would like to say a big thank you. Uh, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you.